On the journey of every photographer, you inevitably reach a crossroad where you're ready to leave the comfort and security of auto mode and start looking at shooting in manual mode. Now, it can definitely be a little bit daunting at first, but don't worry, it's not as hard as you think. So in the video today, I wanna to show you how you can confidently shoot and understand manual mode so you can unleash your full creative potential with your photography. When it comes to creating an exposure, in all cameras, there's just three things being controlled, even on a phone, for example, film camera or our modern digital cameras. The three things that are being controlled, it's our ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. It's known as the exposure triangle. Once you understand these concepts and how they all work together, you're gonna to be able to confidently shoot in manual mode. So we're gonna go in now and break down these three aspects of the exposure triangle one by one, nice and quick and easy, and then we're gonna tie it all together here in the field to create a few images. Let's take a look. So when you're in the auto modes, whether it's complete auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, the camera's doing some of the work for you in regards to that exposure triangle. So as we leave that now, we're going straight to the big M, manual mode, it's up to us. We're in complete control of our ISO aperture and shutter speed. So I'm gonna turn the camera on now. Let's start looking at these three things one at a time. I have individual videos on each of these going into a little bit more detail. Today, I just wanna get straight to the point in regards to how it all ties in together. But if you wanna learn more, just check out those other videos I've got. So let's start now with ISO, because that's typically the first thing that I like to set when I'm out shooting. Okay, our ISO, let's keep it short and sweet and simple. Essentially, the ISO is like your camera's sensitivity to light. What I mean by that is, how does the light appear to the camera? Is it bright, is it dark? The way the ISO works is, the higher we boost that ISO number, the more sensitive the camera is to the light. So our exposure gets brighter. As we put the ISO number down, the exposure gets darker. Think of it like your own eyesight. If you have, for example, ISO 100, hopefully everything looks you know, pretty crisp as it is now, not too bright, not too dark. If we boosted your ISO from 100 to 10,000, suddenly the light that you're looking at would get very, very bright. That's how the camera works. Now, not only is it adjusting our exposure, there's another big side effect with boosting the ISO and that's noise. The higher the ISO, the more noise is gonna be in your image. And noise is basically that loss of detail. Think of it like grain in the film days, grain, speckly, basically it's not good. So for that reason, we generally, we wanna keep our ISO lower. Now every camera has a base or a native ISO. That's where the optimal noise levels are gonna be and the camera's dynamic range, its ability to capture the highlights and the shadows. Generally, it's gonna be 100, 200, ISO 64, depending on your camera brand. Just look it up, base ISO for your camera. For me, it's ISO 100. So at 100, if I take an image there, and then we zoom in and check, we can see minimal noise. If we boost that ISO to something ballistic, 20,000 now, same image, we zoom in, you can see the big difference. So really, ISO, let's keep it low. That's the main thing you wanna do. When would you boost it? as a last resort, astrophotography, if it's very dark and you're trying to freeze movement on an animal or someone moving around or something like that. For me, 95% of my images are ISO 100 or 200. So that's our ISO. Let's set it now, back to 100. Okay, now we've set our ISO. We've only got two more things to worry about. It's our f-stop and our shutter speed. Let's talk about the f-stop now. So when it comes to the f-stop, this is in relation to our aperture. And the aperture, it's actually inside our lens. It's a blade that just opens and closes, very similar to the human eye opening and closing. The aperture is measured in f-stops, and that's the number that we get down here on our screen. At the moment, I'm on f8. So as I adjust the aperture, we're gonna see that f-stop changing, getting higher or lower. And there's two things that are gonna happen here. Firstly, the lower the number goes, the f-stop is opening up the blade and we're letting more light into the camera. So it's adjusting the exposure. If I close the f-stop down, so it's closing down, the f-stop number gets higher. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but it gets higher. The exposure is getting darker. So firstly, it's regulating light coming through the lens into the camera. 
the main thing though we're using f-stop for our aperture is to control our depth of field that's what it's all about and what is depth of field it's basically how much of our image how much of our scene do we want sharp and in focus do we want to be sharp in the foreground midground and background all the way through or do we want to be sharp on a certain point and then have a blurry background and then there's different scenarios where you might want to blur the background or have everything completely sharp so when it comes to the f-stop and depth of field, I really like to think of it as three individual zones. For something like a portrait where I just wanna blur the background and make it more of an artistic portrait and just lead the eye straight to that subject matter, I'm gonna use a wide aperture. So that's a low f-stop number. And that's gonna completely blur that background. If I'm doing just a general happy snap where I'm out and about, you just wanna snap some photos, maybe you're on a vacation with friends or whatever, that's where I'm gonna sit around F7, F8, F9, somewhere around that range. It's gonna get the majority of the frame in focus, but particularly what you focus on will be the sharpest point. When it comes to landscape photography, which is what I do, I wanna be sharp from front to back. I want an infinite depth of field. And in that case, I use a narrow aperture, usually closing their stop down somewhere around F11, F14, F16, and then some extreme cases, we do something called focus stacking where we're focusing multiple times. So there's kind of three different areas. If you're right into landscape photography, you're probably gonna be closing it down a lot more, especially if you have something quite close to you. So for today, I wouldn't mind just getting this whole tree scene sharp all the way through. So for that reason, I'm gonna close it down to about F11. We've set the ISO, we've set our f-stop. Last thing we need to worry about is the shutter speed. Think of the shutter in your camera like a garage door, just opening and closing. Instead of letting cars come into the garage, we're opening up and letting light enter in to the camera. The faster the shutter speed, the less time there is for light to enter in. We slow it down, there's more time for light to come through. So obviously you're gonna use a slower shutter speed when you don't have much light to work with sunrise sunset astrophotography if it's a bright harsh sunny day real bright environment you'll use a faster shutter speed so how do we know what shutter speed we need well thankfully we've got two tools to help us we have the camera's light meter but even more effective is the histogram and that's what we're going to quickly look at now because that's going to help us set the shutter speed accordingly to get the exposure just right. And that's what this is all about, getting the correct exposure. Now, I do have a video more in depth on the histogram, but as a quick guideline here, this histogram, it's a graph showing the data in the image we're about to create. The left-hand side represents shadows, the right-hand side of the graph represents highlights. As we adjust any of our three settings, you're gonna see the data in that histogram move. It's getting brighter or it's getting darker. I've got the ISO and aperture fixed accordingly. We've set those already. So now I'm just using the shutter speed to regulate the light to adjust the exposure. What I'm trying to do is not lose my details too significantly either side. I don't want the white data leaving the left-hand side of the graph or the right-hand side. Most cameras though, we're better off if we're going to have to, like we have in this case, we are starting to clip the right-hand side and the left that's because we have a high contrast scene. So what you'll typically do, especially in landscape photography, is expose for the highlights. And that means that we're letting the highlights just clip a little bit. That's recoverable when we do our post-processing. But if we go any brighter and slow the shutter down, we've completely lost all those highlight details. So I just simply look at the histogram. I'm speeding the shutter up until I can see those sky highlight details coming back in and anywhere around this point now, I'm gonna take my image. Now, you're probably looking at that left-hand side thinking, well, it's quite dark. And yes, it is, but most modern cameras, we have a lot of shadow recovery. That's where the post-processing really plays a huge part in modern digital photography. All right, so we've just photographed the tree, and what I do now is I zoom in, and I can see it's sharp from front to back, just what I was hoping to achieve. And then looking at my histogram, I can see that I've captured all the data there. Job done. Now, as much as I love these trees, I'm really a mountain man. So how about we just quickly zip down the lake, photograph the mountains with this beautiful sunset light, and we're just gonna tie it all together one last time for you so it really makes sense. All 
right, we're at a different location. Let's just do another example shoot and tie everything together one last time. So I wanna capture this entire scene, incorporating the rocks, the lake, and the beautiful mountains in the background. So when it comes to the settings, first thing, ISO, let's keep it low, gone straight to ISO 100. With the f-stop, I have a huge depth of field because I've got something close to me as well as everything off in the distance. So I'm gonna close the f-stop down. I'm gonna go straight to f-16 just because I'm getting quite close to those foreground rocks. Now the shutter speed. When it comes to that, I'm just gonna look at my histogram. Got the histogram here in the live view. And now I'm just gonna adjust the shutter speed accordingly. Ends up about one tenth of a second. And I can see now if I shoot the exposure there, I check the histogram again on the back, job done. All right, I hope that's made sense and just given you the confidence to have a play in manual mode anyway. Now look, does it matter what mode you're shooting in? Not really, but for me personally, I think shooting in manual mode just gives you a little bit more creative control. And when you've got that full creative control, then there's no limitations out there and it just really becomes more enjoyable in my opinion. As always, if you've got any questions at all, leave them in the comments. Hope to see you in the next video. Cheers. That's why I'm a photographer.